Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. All that you have taught us and all that you're going to teach us, we are so grateful that we can learn and grow and change. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, I'm just calling this message, it's time for change. And really what I want to talk to you about is, I know something you'll just be delighted in, and even if you're not, I'll talk about it anyway. But I'm going to talk about overcoming selfishness because I frankly believe it's time for us to get ourselves off our mind, quit being obsessed with what people think about us and what they're saying about us and what's happening to us and what's not happening to us and what people are doing to us and what they're not doing for us. And we need to give ourselves once and for all to God, trusting Him to take care of us retire from self-care, throw a big party, come on now, and while you're waiting for God to do whatever it is he's going to do for you, through you, in your life, you stay busy being a blessing to somebody else. It's really a very simple process. Forget yourself, lose sight of yourself, all your own interest. Take up your cross, Jesus said, and follow me. And the cross that we're to take up is not tragedies and all kinds of disasters and horrible sicknesses. It's literally just learning to live for something other than yourself. Can anybody say amen? amen. Now, let me just tell you that every person in the building has problems with selfishness. You don't have to try to be selfish. You show up on planet Earth well-equipped with it. What we want to do is learn how to not be selfish, how to recognize it, to realize that it's not okay, that it keeps us from the very best life that God has for us. And literally, and I want to just get this across to you in so many different ways tonight, the more you try to take care of yourself, and I'm not talking about taking care of yourself in a balanced way. I'm not talking about don't take care of your health and don't take care of your body. That's, that's not the kind of stuff I'm talking about. But the more you try to make yourself happy, the more unhappy you're going to be. There's only one way to be truly happy, and that's to trust God to do whatever needs to be done in your life. Even as far as encouragement, I've learned that it's useless for me to get mad at somebody if they're not encouraging me. What I need to do is tell God that I need encouragement and then trust him to give it to me through whomever he chooses to give it to me through. And it's amazing how much encouragement I get when I do that and how much more fun that is than getting mad at Dave because he didn't say and do this and getting mad at my kids because they didn't say and do that and getting mad at, you know, the people I minister to because they didn't write and say good things. Instead, they wrote and complained about something. Come on now. Do any of you ever, do any of you ever get mad at somebody because they're not encouraging you like you think they should? Well, you know what? Just forget all about it. Don't get mad at them. They don't even know what they're doing. I mean, really, people aren't going around trying to make you miserable on purpose. Now, yeah, there may be a few people if that's their assignment, but, you know, by and large, people just have problems. They're hurting, and we get in the way of their pain. We get in the way of their messed up lives, and we just get hurt, but it's not like they're picking on you. That's just kind of what they do to everybody. No wonder Jesus says that we need to forgive them and pray for them and hope that things can change in their life. Now, that doesn't mean you got to sit around and let somebody abuse you, but it means instead of trying to make somebody else treat you the way you think you should be treated, go to God with it. Let's learn tonight to start going to God with a lot more than what we do. Let's turn ourselves over to God and see what He can do for us. I got tired a long time ago of trying to take care of myself. I'm not living anymore to make myself happy, and an odd thing has happened. I'm happier than I've ever been in my whole life. Did you hear what I said? Come on, I want to say it again. I'm not living any longer to make myself happy, and a strange thing has happened. I'm happier than I've ever been in my whole life. I think we need that one more time. Don't live to make yourself happy. 
Turn your case over to God. Put him in charge of your reconstruction progress. Give God your case and just tell him, if I'm ever going to be happy, you're going to have to make me happy. If I'm ever going to be satisfied, if I'm ever going to get anything that I think I want in life, then you're going to have to give it to me. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of wrestling with something all the time. I'm tired of being frustrated all the time. I'm tired of being mad at people because they're not making me happy. God, if I'm going to be happy and satisfied and fulfilled and blessed, it's up to you. And then in the meantime, you make it your business to purposely be a blessing everywhere that you go. You don't wait to feel like it. You do it on purpose. Could we at least decide to bless one person a day? Just one. Just start with one, and then maybe that one can go to two, and two can go to three. And the less you think about yourself, the happier you're going to be. Overcoming selfishness. John 12, 24. Does this sound like anything that you might possibly be able to use? I assure you, and, and I love the choice of Jesus' words here, most solemnly, I tell you. So he's really saying, listen, what I'm getting ready to say to you is very serious. I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one grain. It never becomes more, but lives by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. So it's amazing what all that scripture is telling us. Obviously, Jesus was the grain of wheat that died and fell into the ground. And through his death, he became the firstborn of many brethren. And now, because of that one seed that he sowed, the seed of his life, he gave his life. Now, we're all here tonight, and not only those of us tonight, but literally millions of believers all over the world. Christ gave the whole world hope through that one unselfish act of giving himself. You know, we have a real tendency to try to protect ourselves and take care of ourselves and make sure we're treated right and nobody takes advantage of us and we get justice and we get our fair share and people treat us the way they should treat us. And the more we try to do that, it seems like the worse things get and the more frustrated we are. You know, if you try to take care of yourself, there's always going to be somebody for you to be mad at. I'm glad this one girl down here likes my message. <laughs> I mean, is anybody in the building tired of being mad because somebody's not treating you the way you think they ought to treat you? <laughs> well, my boss doesn't pay me what I'm worth. Well, tell God. And then walk in love with your boss. Pray for him. Do what God tells you to. Walk in love with him, go to work, act like a Christian, and just watch and see what God will do for you. Just watch and see what God will do for you. The longer we try to take care of ourselves, the less we're going to experience the outrageous blessings of God in our life. It is so much fun to stop trying to take care of yourself and let God go to work in your life. And if you've never done it, tonight it's time for a change. I'm excited about this message tonight because I, I can just sense in my spirit that some of you are going to go, that's it. <laughs> that's it. I'm retiring from self-care. I am so fed up with trying to take care of myself and make sure nobody hurts me and everybody does this for me and I get my way and I want people to think right of me and treat me right. I give it all up, God. Whatever happens to me in my life is up to you. I put my trust in you for timing on breakthroughs, to have the finances that I need, to have the right friends that I need. I trust you to take care of me from this night forward. I give it up, I retire, and I'm going to have a party.
You know, being abused in my childhood, I kind of learned quick that nobody was going to take care of me, so I decided that I was going to take care of me and that nobody was ever going to hurt me again and nobody was going to push me around and nobody was going to tell me what to do. And man, I came out fighting. It doesn't take too many years of that to just completely and totally wear you out. You think you're protecting yourself from getting hurt, but the truth is you're just hurting yourself every single moment that you live. You're hurting yourself. Cast your care on him, for he careth for you. God will take care of us if we stop trying to do it ourselves. And here again, I'm not saying, I mean, I teach people, you need to take care of yourselves. You need to get sleep. You need to eat right. You need to have fun. You need to laugh. I mean, we need to, there's a certain amount of, I'm not talking about that kind of not taking care of yourself. I'm talking about this other thing where you're always trying to make sure that everybody treats you right. What about me? What about me? What about me? Well, we're almost in May, and I haven't had to do the robot once this year yet, so. I guess maybe I could do it for you tonight. So. Let me just tell you that I was so selfish. Oh my gosh, I was so selfish. I was always on my mind. Now, you know, if Dave was going to go play golf, the first thing I'd think is, well, what about me? <laughs> and if Dave was going to watch a football game, well, what about me? And the kids would go outside with Dave to play, and I had work to do inside. Now, you know, mind you, I could have not worked and went out and enjoyed myself, but no, I, I wanted to work so I could feel sorry for myself. <laughs> Come on. And everything was, well, what about me? You know, what about me? When's somebody going to do something for me? And I started early in the morning before I was even fully awake thinking about myself. <laughs> Any of you like that? And so many, many, many years ago, I was laying in bed one morning and I wasn't even fully awake yet. And I was thinking about how I could get Dave to not do what he wanted to do that day and do what I wanted. And, you know, how I could maybe get the kids to do the housework so I could just kind of chill and, you know, have fun. And it was like I was just thinking about myself, just laying there in bed, thinking about myself. And, you know, that's a dangerous way to start your day because however you get started, that's usually the way things go the rest of the day. And you're much better off to lay in bed and purposely think, God, what can I do for somebody else today? How can I be a greater blessing to my family? How can I, God, how can I be a better wife today? The last time I asked God that, he told me to cook Dave's breakfast. I haven't asked that in a while. Because I'm not into too much cooking. And uh, poor guy about fainted when I said, I'm going to cook your breakfast. So you got to be ready when you ask God that kind of stuff. And, uh, but it's been life-changing for me. The principles that I'm sharing with you tonight really has been one of the key elements in my life that have gotten me from where I was to where I am. So I'm laying there thinking about myself. And I kind of had like this little vision and the Holy Ghost began to deal with me in my heart. And he said, you know, um, the enemy comes and starts putting thoughts in your head real early in the morning. And it's like he's getting you wound up for the day. <laughs> he said, you, you remind me of this little robot. The devil comes and he's like, what about me? What about me? What about me? And what about me? And then you put your feet on the floor, and this is the way you look to me the rest of the day. What about me? What about me? What about me? What about me? Beep, beep. What about me? What about me? What about me? I will never understand what is so magical about the robot. But I've had to do it in India, in Africa. I've had little kids out on the mission field going, what about me? What about me? But I guess it gets a, a message across that we are pretty full of ourselves and 
It's not the way we should live. Examples of selfishness are examples of unselfishness. Let's go about it the positive way. Live to please God, not yourself. When you do that, and I want you to listen to this word, you're making an investment, a kingdom investment. And anytime we invest in the kingdom of God, we always get a great dividend, a great return on our investment. If I live to make other people's lives better, I'm making an investment. If I don't get upset or depressed when I don't get my way, I'm making an investment. Because when you're able to do what's right, when it's difficult to do what's right, boy, you're sowing a hybrid seed. And a hybrid seed is a seed of a different quality. Produces rapid harvest. If I refuse to have me on my mind all the time, I'm making an investment. I don't need to think excessively about what I look like, what people think of me, how I can please myself, how I can get what I want, how good I am or how bad I am. Even thinking about what's wrong with you all the time is still having you on your mind all the time. Keeps you from focusing on Jesus. Owning excessive amounts of things while other people that I know are in need is not a good thing. Always use money and things to bless people don't use people to get money and things. One more time. Always use money and things to bless people. Don't ever use people to get money and things. Amen. God's given us resources. Anybody who lives in the Western world has resources. We have stuff. If you don't think you got any stuff, go look around your house. And it's amazing what means nothing to you can be a great blessing to somebody else. And even when you give somebody a thing, maybe if they don't even need the thing, what they need is the blessing to just know that you thought about them. We have the ability to put smiles on faces and we need to start doing it. The greatest fruit of a Jesus life is an unselfish life. The greatest fruit of a Jesus life is an unselfish life. Matthew 12, 33 says, every tree is known by its fruit. You will know them by their fruit. If there's wickedness inside, the fruit's gonna be rotten. If there's good things inside, the fruit is going to be good. I don't have to guess if an apple tree is an apple tree. I can tell by the apples that it's an apple tree. I don't have to guess when I'm in Florida if an orange tree is an orange tree. I can see that it is because it has oranges on it. And Christians should be so fruitful that nobody has to guess whether you're a Christian or not or try to figure it out. They need to be able to tell right away that there's something different about your life. And it's all from the fruit of the Spirit. Unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, if it dies, it's up to us. If it dies, it will bear much fruit. Do you want your life to count for something? Do you want to leave a legacy when your time here is finished? Do you want to teach your children something just by your example and your behavior? Don't tell them to do one thing while they watch you do something else. Amen? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, just a, a wonderful scripture that I absolutely love. And he died for all, that all those who live, now watch this, might no longer live to and for themselves, but to and for him who died and was raised again for their sake. <laughs> That's an awesome scripture. One of the reasons why Jesus died, in addition to forgiving us for our sins, was so we no longer have to live selfish, self-centered lives. Because when he died, we died. 
We were with him legally and spiritually on the cross when he died. When he was raised, we were raised to a brand new life. Now, it's already, I mean, the truth is, is you're dead to sin. There's a part of you that hates sin, despises sin, doesn't want to sin. We have a flesh, so there's another part of us that still has that sin principle in it. So we're in the middle with a free will needing to make a choice about whether to follow God or to follow the flesh. And this goes on every day of our lives all day long. I set before you life and death. Choose life that you and your descendants may live. When you're not accustomed to making good choices in the beginning, they are very gut-wrenchingly hard because the devil will fight you every inch of the way. The longer you make good decisions, the easier it gets, and pretty soon it becomes like that new nature now is turned inside out, and it's just the way you are. Amen? When I was living a sinful life, I was sinning full-time, and occasionally I did something right. Now I do what's right most of the time, and occasionally I still will have a bad, self-centered, selfish day, but thank God that's not my lifestyle anymore. I don't live like that anymore. And you don't have to either. He died for me so that I don't have to be all alone with just me. <laughs> you know, that scripture, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. You see, if we won't die to self, then we have the loneliest of lives that's possible to have because we're the only ones in it. It's just me and then there's me and <laughs> then there's more of me and then I wake up the next day and there's me. And the only way that we ever really are ready for a change is when we just get fed up with me where we just can't hardly stand me anymore. I don't want to spend my life trying to take care of me. I'm kind of at the point where I don't really care what you do with me, God. I know you're good and you do whatever you want to, but I cannot do the work anymore of trying to make myself happy. Well, one of the ways to use your time wisely is to make sure you spend a fair amount of it being a blessing to someone else. Because you know what happens when you do that? Then all of a sudden, you find that God is taking care of you with more ease than ever before. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will God cause people to give back to you. But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and you know taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, it's really great to have the ability to feed children all around the world. And I have a goal and a desire to keep feeding more and more all the time. This after-school feeding program serves an average of 90 to 100,000 hot meals per One year. One meal for these kids is, is survival. 
Well, I'm here in Thailand at one of our children's homes. You can feed, house, and educate a child. Hope Cambodia has been absolutely amazing. We've opened 15 different orphanages. And we're so grateful to be able to build this well here in Sri Lanka. We love to get clean drinking water to people. Well, so the water they're drinking is not making their children sick, and it's, it's not dirty, contaminated water. <laughs> definitely feel in Haiti just the absolute desperation. I'm at the Cure Hospital in Malawi, Africa. A huge line of people who are waiting to see our nurses and our doctors. Many doctors and medical people have volunteered their time. We are in Summers Point, New Jersey. Well, today we're, we're in Joplin, Missouri. We're here in Haiti in the village, and we're about to move people into brand new houses we've built. The winds were so constant with these big, big gusts. It was terrifying. 150 or more were killed. Thousands left homeless. Hey, you there, guys? Uh, those gifts and joys five minutes. Here in Zimbabwe, I was able to hand out the two millionth bag in a prison. That you can't have a Today. Don't know how many, you know, lives you guys save by coming in and showing the love that you guys show. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change. You can get healing. You can survive. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. Elke gedachte roept emoties in ons op. Kan jij hier goed mee omgaan? Laat je niet leiden door jouw gevoelens. Joyce Meyer heeft daarover een boek geschreven. Zodat jij de baas wordt over jouw emoties. Leven boven je gevoel. Bestel het boek Leven boven je gevoel nu via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Het computerteam van Joyce Meyer Ministries werkt met man en macht aan onze Nederlandse website. They're faster speed and they're going to have a much better web-based experience. Well, I'm just curious. If we would add a Series 12 flux capacitor, wouldn't we gain as much as a terabyte in data encryption? Wow, that's really out of the box thinking. What's your name? Joyce. That's the kind of stuff that's going to make JoyceMeyer.org a better website. Ga naar onze nieuwe site joy-meijer.nl en volg ons op Facebook.